we are back again. I can't believe it's been two days already. These last 48 hours have just shot by since the last time I spoke to you. But we're back. Welcome back to the Marami Podcast for another edition. Welcome to this Thursday's edition of the podcast. Hope you're all doing well. It's been a while since I've done two podcasts in a week. But I'm here. And I'm feeling good. And most importantly, it's Thursday. You know I love my Thursdays. It's beer day today for me. I love it. <laughs> Hello guys. Um, hope you are doing well since the last time I spoke to you. A uh, couple of interesting things we'll talk about on the podcast today. Um, and also a lot of your questions I want to answer too as well. Thank you guys for the response. Um, reading through some of your messages last night about the, the, the podcast from the other day. Um, a lot of you Spotify listeners out there were getting in touch with me and talking about some of the things you're using, some of the stuff that I talked about on Tuesday's podcast about the 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 Vince McMahon sex scandal and obviously the, the football fans were getting in contact with the Jurgen Klopp news as well. So guys, thank you very much for that. I appreciate all your emails over the last 48 hours since Tuesday. And once again, if Tuesday's podcast did affect you in any way, shape or form, I do apologise for that. But I just thought I'd talk about it on the podcast because it is sort of the one of the top breaking stories in the world. So thank you for all your feedback, guys. I do appreciate it. But anyway, guys, before I continue on in today's podcast, you know, I'd like to get this out of the way before I continue on into the t- today's discussion. If you're a new listener to the Murami podcast or you're a regular listener, uh, and you'd like to get in touch with the program and send us an email or, or uh, a message on social media, or you'd like to hear me talk about certain things or whatever, you can get in touch with me by the following methods. You can contact me, first of all, by the Mirror Army YouTube channel Facebook page, which is just Mirror Army YouTube channel. Please drop a like on that page. I would appreciate it. Um, also, if you want to f- contact me on Instagram, you can by contacting me on official Matthew Moore on Instagram. Uh, I'm not on X, it's your Twitter, we want to call it. You know I'm still not on that platform. So any new, new listeners out there, you know I'm not on that. Definitely not. Um, if you want to contact me by email, you can, which is Podcast at yahoo.com. That's Podcast at yahoo.com. And also if you want to go to the website to get all your Moor Army merchandise for the podcast here or the Moor Army YouTube channel or great merchants on there, hoodies, t-shirts, mugs, you name it, we've got it. It's there. Moorarmy.co.uk. You can listen to all the podcasts on there. You can also listen to, or sorry, check out all the YouTube channel videos. Um, which is obviously, if you're listening to this podcast here on YouTube right now, please drop a like on this video and also subscribe to the podcast channel. And also, if you are a fan of our YouTube videos, don't forget to go and check out our channel, Moor Army YouTube channel. And please subscribe to our channel over there. You have well over two, nearly two and a half thousand videos on there to watch from the last... I don't know how many years, it's been nine or eight years coming up here in March. So yes, guys, that's how you can get in touch with me. There's plenty of ways of doing it. And if you want to get involved in the podcast, I'd love to hear from you. But anyway, guys, what have I got to talk about today? A few interesting subjects I want to chat about today briefly on the podcast. Um, last 48 hours for myself, it's been quite busy um, since the last time I spoke to you. I have been a very happy Liverpool supporter, as Liverpool tanked, I'm going to say that. Whooped Chelsea's ass last night 4-1 at Anfield in a great game. And local Northern Ireland player, all the way from Castle Derg, where me and Lewis are going this weekend, Connor Bradley, ex Dungallon Swiss player who now plays for Liverpool, got his first goal for the club last night. So very happy for Connor Bradley. Uh, met the young kid loady loady years ago um, when he was a young lad. Very, very pleasant young lad and uh, Northern Ireland player too as well. So well done to Connor Bradley on uh, scoring his first senior goal for Liverpool last night. So well done, kid. You've worked your ass off. You deserve it. Um, what else have been up to since the last time I spoke to you? Just be, pretty much just working and doing all the usual stuff. Lewis was doing a bit of DIY last night. If you want to go and check out the new vlog that we put out today. Um, where Lewis done a bit more DIY work. Also, Dad... Had a very stressful time at the car MOT centre. But we're going to talk about driving today, actually, in the podcast here briefly. Um, some footage that I hadn't shown before in the vlog that I was coming across the other night. And I thought, hmm, I haven't showed that footage yet. I'll show that. Dad stressed out when he took a car for an MOT there a few a wee while back there. So I showed a bit of footage of that. Dad stresses out every time I take him to the fucking MOT centre. Or we go to the MOT centre. We went to the one in Lisbon last year. I think it was last year we went. 
I've done a vlog down there. I've actually ran into a really cool wee sports car when we were down there. Like a wee sort of, it's hard to explain. You need to go and watch the vlog on the YouTube channel. Um, we ended up having to go to Lisburn because we couldn't get an appointment in the one nearby. So this year we went to the one and <laughs> he was flipping. If he had her, he'd be fucking pulling it out, to be honest. Dad, he's just a stress monger like mum. They're just, well, disaster. But yes, you are going to check out that footage from Dad stressing out and ripping his hair out at the, at the MOT Centre. You can go and check it out on the YouTube channel now. Um, I've just put it out today there. Today's a very um, sad day for mum today as well. Um, today's obviously this podcast being recorded on the 1st of February. Today would have been my grandmother, which is mum's mum's 89th birthday today. Um, she died when she was 60. So she did um, back in 1995. Uh, long story about that, guys. She... Um, Unfortunately, took her own life back in nineteen ninety five. Never forget that day like it was yesterday. But today she would have been her eighty ninth birthday, and I was t- chatting to mum there last night. And uh, she'll be calling around here today because mum with social media is a fucking disaster. She can't even know how to post a thing on Facebook. She always asks me to post a wee thing on her Facebook page, obviously saying happy birthday to her mum and stuff. So my grandmother, who would have been not. My grandmother who passed away there recently got with dad's mum who passed away there two Octobers ago. Um, my other granny, which would have been my mum's mum, she would have been 89 today. And you know something? I wish I had still been here today to meet my two kids because she was, a, she, was a, she was just a, a woman who literally would have given you the, sh- the, the blouse off her back. She was this typical, you know, hard-working, old-school Belfast woman who, you know, just grew up during the bad times of Northern Ireland, during the Troubles and stuff and all that stuff, and, and she was just just an unbelievable kind-hearted woman who would have given you the clothes off, off her back. And as I said, you know, obviously my kids never met her, they didn't know her. Um, I wish they had got to know her because they would have loved her, because she was she would have doted on Brick and Lewis when they were smaller. Um, but Unfortunately, she never got to meet them. But again, we've got some pictures of her. And, you know, people will I'll always tell her, tell them stories about her. Mum always tells the kids stories about her all the time anyway. But, um, yeah, she, she would have been 89 today. So, happy heavenly birthday, Grammy. And if you're up there listening, you know, hope you're having a good time with her. Because obviously my granda's up there as well. And some of her family's up there too. And it's just... Uh, yeah, it's just, she would have been 89 today, so when I'm having a wee beer tonight, I'll have a wee beer in her honour tonight because it's her birthday today, so happy 89th birthday, Granny. And the thing about it is, mum, mum, mum has never been the same since her mum passed away. Every year she sort of gets a wee bit of a downer that time, and I always keep saying to her and trying to encourage her, you know, you have to move on, you have to go on with your life and stuff, and you have to try and, you know, think about the good times but move on but mum finds it quite difficult and she, she still grieves to this day so I've said to her about maybe trying to talk about it more and try and you know move on from it but mom, everybody deals with grief in different ways but again that's that's the way she deals with it so but anyway yes happy 80, 89th birthday today Gram, Grammy pity you weren't here today she'd been laughing at me about YouTube and all she'd been saying you, what's this YouTube stuff you're doing <laughs> <laughs> I've been like, why, well, okay. Oh, she could tell a few stories from back in the day, I'll tell you. Anyway, yes, that's what have been her birthday today. So I want to have a wee beer tonight in her honour. So hopefully t- Tony turns up tonight and I'm not sitting on my fucking Todd like I was last week. I haven't heard from Tony all week. So I don't know, he hasn't been too well again, like, but. And he also has been looking after his daughter and whatnot and working and stuff. So I'm hoping to get to see him tonight. Fingers crossed. But anyway, what else do I want to talk about on the podcast? What else have I been up to before I get into some of the stories today? Um, pretty much that's been it. Like, guys, just, just, just working on things. Now, I am due to go out today to a local church for to uh, go on. It's like a drop-in centre thing I mentioned on the on the vlog. Um, last Thursday, I was talking to some people from the wee church that I used to go to when I was a lot younger back in the day. And they do a wee drop-in centre thing on a Thursday afternoon between, I think it's one and four. Where you can go in and obviously and, and, and 
it's, it's a whole different thing. It's like a wee day drop in centre for people. And I told them I'd come along and sort of help out and things like that. So I'm planning on heading there today. So fingers crossed it's still on and I can get to go there today and uh, see them before I come back home tonight. So I'm looking forward to getting back. I haven't been in that building for about 20 years, maybe more. Me and my friend, who's no longer with us anymore, he, we used to go there every Thursday night and play indoor bowling. We used to also go in there and help out with the elderly and stuff too as well. And uh, we used to go there all the time on a Thursday. But then I obviously got older and got my first job. And then I, I still continued to go as much as I could. And then I ended up getting a job in a car home. And I was working all the time. And it just got to the point where it was like, right, I can't go every week now. So I couldn't. And then I met Brooke and Lewis's mum. And I tried to take her to the bowling thing once or twice. And she didn't like it. So uh, between work and trying to spend time with her, I ended up having to give it up. And and then I stopped going, but I'm going. To, I'm looking forward to getting back today and hopefully seeing a few old faces and helping out some people who need it. So it's a wee church here in Bangor. I'm going to go to today and hopefully help out a little bit. So if I'm, I, I did say I'm a vlog last night, if I do get a chance, I'll try and do some vlogging when I'm there, or maybe even show you some pictures of where I am. But hopefully it's still on today, and I get to go along there and uh, do my bit for the community. So that's what I've been up to, guys. So let's get into some of the stories that I've been talking about here today first story is social media i'm going to talk about again and you're probably thinking oh for fuck's sake matthew very spoke about me mr zuckerberg from facebook's in the news today he's come out as an apology to apologize to people um who have been affected by social media because there's a lot of like there's, i've heard a lot of stories going knocking around here the last lot of weeks about these new rumoured laws coming in, if, if certain people get elected in the next election and these new laws are coming in, especially with young ones in relation to social media, because of a lot of different things going on in social media with the likes of suicides and, you know, inappropriate stuff, online bullying, trafficking, all different types of stuff going on in social media. Mr. Zuckerberg from Facebook's come out today and apologise to anybody who's been affected by this. They are trying to police this matter. Sometimes I think Facebook needs to be more policed. I think I talked about this a couple of months ago. I think all social media platforms, you have to prove who you are to have an account on social media because of this, because of the, the, the bot accounts, the fake accounts, the trolls, the perverts, you know, all the different scum of the earth out there, the online trolls, the bullies, the morons who sit behind keyboards with their fake accounts thinking they are somebody, thinking they're going to have a pop at people. You know, but social media is is being looked at more in depth now. And I was reading through this this story this morning in my coffee before I, I decided to push record here today. Just got gathering a few wee notes for the podcast and stuff. And there was there, one of these politicians were saying that they're going to try and possibly push for a law. Now, is it this year or next year for under sixteens to not have any type of social media accounts and mobile phones? I'd love to see you fucking try and get that to happen. Because they're still going to do what they're going to have to do. The police go around stopping 16 year olds and if anybody has a phone on them, they're going to take it off them. Yes, I understand that these young ones nowadays, and it pisses me off every day, you know. And there's times where I've had to remind my kids, like, Jesus Christ, put your fucking phone away for five minutes. You know, it's a society now where young ones are walking around super glued to phones and they don't know the outside world. Like, for example, I told this story a lot of months ago where me and Lewis were on a train one day, and we got on the train here in Bangor. We were going to Belfast, and every single stop right to Belfast, there was a crowd of young ones sitting at the table in the chair facing us, and they never spoke to each other once because they were super glued to their phones. This is the thing. It's a world now where people are glued to phones a lot. I try, recent months, I've tried to stay off my phone more now. I only really use my phone for posting stuff for for the for the vlogs and the podcast obviously recording a vlog now and again um i would use it at football to take pictures obviously lewis would use my new iphone 15 to take some videos from the side of the pitch for the football channel that we work at um but daily i try to cut my screen time back away because once you get hooked on that guys you're you're, you're pretty much on it all the time but these young ones are consistently super glued to phones. In recent weeks as well, I've had to have a word with my daughter about this, where she's coming in through the door, and I've said to her, like, fuck me, Brooke, you're only in the door two minutes, and you're like super glued to your phone. I'm trying to have a conversation with her, and she's got her head stuck on the screen, and I'm like, if you don't put that phone down when I'm trying to talk to you about something important, your phone's going to end up in the fucking bin. It's a world now where everything's social media. Now, I, 
I have an opinion on this, and you know yourself, guys, if you're a regular listener to this podcast, or you've watched my YouTube channel for the last eight years nearly. Social media is a good thing if you're promoting businesses or events or, or, or different things that are, are positive. But it can also be a fucking nightmare where, you know, people go on there like pedophiles and bullies and trolls and just all this crap. I think if I was a politician, I would be pushing for laws to state that to have a social media account, you need to prove who you are, whether it be through uh, credit card details, an identity card or something to prove who you are. So you can have an account. Yes, obviously you can try and work your way around it and all that, but at least it'll cut back on the fake accounts, like showing who you are. And not charging people for social media. No, 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 no. No. Unlike Twitter and I, they're charging you so much to have a wee blue tick beside your name. Fuck that shit. But you know what I mean? Just literally prove who you are. And if you can't prove who you are in certain ways, then you don't have an account. Simple. You know? Uh, you can talk about it all day, all the positives and negatives, but your man Zuckerberg's come out from Facebook today and apologise for anybody this is affected on his platform. Because, you know, in recent years, guys, you've heard a lot of, like, suicides from young people. A lot of uh, sex trafficking, pedophiles, you know, grooming kids, <sighs> fraud, people being scammed out of money, you know, it's just one thing after another. And he's come out, obviously representing Facebook today, and made a statement publicly to the world that he, he apologises for any sort of missions doing. He's going to try and look into more of their, 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 their rules and regulations and stuff and try and cut back on all these people who are just basically making social media an absolute fucking nightmare. Excuse me. I'm going to cough my guts up there. <laughs> um... Long gone, long gone, long gone the day, sorry, I can't even fucking speak, that there was no social media in the world. And it was all just normal. And this is where I look back at it and I look at it in a way where I go, right, fuck me, back in those days, like mid-90s, late-90s, early 2000s, when there still was no Facebook and Twitter and uh, things come out at the very start, the likes of MySpace and Bebo and all that stuff and they all first start trickling out on the on the internet um but back in the days where you could just browse on the internet and that was it but then they started creating chat rooms and started creating all these different things you know it, you could talk about it all day you really could I, I would take probably fucking two or three hours to win the all in depth of it else but i'm not going to but just as i come out here today your man zuckerberg has come out and said uh about this and it's a bit interesting to read. Um, one story I want to talk about today. Just give me one second. <coughs> I'm not getting sick again. Just got a bit of clay in the back of my throat. <laughs> this story broke my heart. And this, the reason why I want to talk about this today is because there's a lot of people in this country who are doing this. And it fucking pisses me off every day. And there's genuine people out there who need help, who don't get it. But there's people out there who know how to buck the system and fuck the system over and get loads of money out of it. And they don't deserve it. And this young girl really needs help. Read a story this morning. A student girl who is dis- disabled was forced to use her own student loan to buy her own wheelchair because the NHS would not fund her for a wheelchair. That is heartbreaking. This young girl was forced to use her student loan to buy her own wheelchair after she was told that she didn't meet the criteria for an NHS one. Bethany Hanley, 24, faced a choice between that or being stuck in her student house. She's now got a a campaign against the Welsh Government to try and get these rules changed to be more like England. And it's in Wales. And here's the thing, guys. I've said this before about Wales. Wales is stuck in the fucking past. See, as long as your man Drakeford... Now, obviously, Drakeford's stepping away. But as long as people like him are running that country, that country's never going to move forward. But to see things like this, young girls who are disabled, who need wheelchairs, are not being granted anything by the NHS... But they're giving fucking loans and money and benefits to people out there who there's nothing wrong with them. And they're, they don't want to fucking work and they sit on their ass all day and they just literally suck the, the, the country dry of money. And there's young girls like that who can't even walk, who's disabled. And they would not fund her for even a standard basic wheelchair. And it goes on into the story here to say 
that, you know, there's all different types of wheelchairs. I know people here in wheelchairs. So what do I, who, who, who live off a wheelchair every day because they can't walk because of all different situations. I know people who go to the ice hockey at the Belfast Giants who get spina bifida, who are constantly bound to a wheelchair every day. I know a guy who lives in Balna Mallard who helps out with the football club. He's in an electric wheelchair and he's literally paralysed downwards. He has a car and all with him too, but he tries his best to help out with Balna Mallard Football Club. Imagine them people turn around saying to them, oh, you're not getting a wheelchair. But Joe blogs down the road there who goes down to the doctor and says, oh, I have a bad back doctor, I can't walk, blah, 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 but there's fuck all wrong with him. And they give him a few hundred pound a month on benefits and give him everything under the fucking sun. Disability car, the whole lot, boom. And there's a girl like that who can't even walk, legitimately walk, and she can't get shit. She can't even get a basic, normal, plain wheelchair. She had to use her own student loan money, which is an absolute fortune to pay back anyway. And she has to pay that out to the government. Or sorry, pay it out of her own student loan to help her get mobility about in her daily life. Where's the justice in that, guys? Well, this young lady's on a, on a, a pursuit to try and I and get the, the rules changed. Because to be quite honest with you, it is disgusting when I read stories like that. That young girl is struggling every day. And she's kind of getting access to a wheelchair. And wheelchairs are not cheap nowadays, guys. They're not. Wheelchairs are not cheap. By far, they're not cheap. Not a chance. So they're not. Even from your basic standard wheelchair right up to the, the top of the range, electric wheelchairs. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just disgusting. The people out there who are struggling every day can't even leave their own home. But there's people out there who know how to work the system, how to buck the system. They know what they're doing. They're crafty. There's me, for example. I'll give you a story. This is a true story. Every day, I have problems. I have lower back problems. I have a neck issue from when I used to do my wrestling days. Sometimes I, I get uh, pins and needles in my fingertips. I can't even hold a cup. I have no feeling in my left thumb due to an accident that I had eight years ago. I have a busted knee. My lower back's fucked. I'm waiting for her to go to the hospital here at the minute, my back. There's my brother, for example, as well. He had an accident when he was a child. My brother has two metal pins in his hips, one on each hip. There's days my brother can't even hardly get out of a fucking chair. I've never told that story before, even on YouTube. My brother has a bad back and two pins, metal pins in his hip from an accident that he had at a kid's play area years ago when he was smaller. Do you see my brother going down to the doctor and crying poverty and saying, oh, doc, I can't walk, my back's fucked, my pins in my head. You know, my bro eventually, when he's soon, actually, in the next couple of years, he's going to have to go and get an operation where he's to get those pins taken out and new ones put in because, obviously, the pins that he was putting at the time because he was a small child at the time. So, you know what I mean? Because, obviously, he's grew up now, he's got older. And his body's got bigger and older and older, obviously. You know, me and my brother could go down to the doctors and cry poverty, but we don't. We get up every day, we do our work, we work hard, we look after our kids. But there's people out there who don't even want to fucking work. And they've never worked a day of their life. They're, they're driving around in their flashy fucking disability cars and all paid for by the taxpayer. And they're all driving around all the nice houses and flashy this and flashy that. And there's a, pe- girl, there's a person like that young girl who can't even get a fucking wheelchair and she's classed. She is officially, she can't walk, she's disabled. And she needs a wheelchair to get around. And she can't get one. Just shows what type of world we're living in, doesn't it? These people know how to work a system. Trust me. They really do. I've been seeing it for years. It just makes me so fucking sick. So it does. But I hope that young girl gets the wheelchair that she needs. Because at the end of the day, she needs it. And I hope she gets it. I really do. Guys, we're talking about it on Tuesday's podcast about London. Remind me about the young guy contacted me about the crime rate in his area uh, in London. Saw this story breaking today, and I I couldn't believe what I was reading when I seen this. A London chemical attacker travelled from Newcastle upon Tyne to to London before hurling dangerous substance over a woman and her two children. This guy travelled from fucking Newcastle to London just to throw chemicals over a woman. A man's allegedly attacked a woman and her two children with a a corner was it, was it a of substance. I can't pronounce that word. In Clapham, South London, last night, 
and has been named by the police Abdul Edli, Ezidaz, whatever his name is. He's from the Newcastle area. He's alleged to have thrown an alkaline substance at the mother and her two daughters in a targeted attack which saw a total of 11 people taken to hospital. What the fuck is going on? It's the fact that he travelled from fucking Newcastle all the way down to London to throw this stuff over this girl. What the hell is the world coming to? Like, seriously? What is the goddamn world coming to? I, I just don't know. I, 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 every day I, I wake up and I, I'm, I'm working at my computer or whatever, or gathering notes for a podcast and I see stuff like that, I go to my, I just look and go, what in the love of fuck is going on with this world? The world's going mad, guys. It really is going mad. And I also heard today as well that an MP uh, quit as well. An MP, like a member of parliament, um, after being threatened, after death threats. Obviously, the last couple of years we've had, like, you know, politicians being stabbed and killed, and the world just seems to be getting worse. I don't know. When I saw that there, it was like the fa- it just baffled me the fact that he travelled from fucking Newcastle upon time down to London just to do this. You know what was going through his mind the whole way down that trip, just to do that. I don't know, but he's been arrested, and I hope the fuck they lock him up for a long time. Unreal, it's crazy. Touchy subject now for the podcast. I've had, a, I've had a few of these people contact me over the last lot of months. You uh, vegan eaters out there. People who said, I've had emails from people saying, oh, you know, you're a disgrace and all. I've watched your vlogs and I've seen you eating meat and I, you shouldn't be doing this. And, you know, you're against vegans and you're against this and against that. And I'm going, okay, fine. Believe what you want to believe. I don't care. I don't give a shit. Listen, each to your own. You want to be a vegan? Be a vegan. You want to eat meat? Eat meat. You don't want to eat meat at all? That's your choice. I don't care what anybody does. It's, it's, it's up to themselves what they put into their own body. You know what I mean? It's not for me personally. Um, but a story came out here today. Uh, vegan restaurant has started to sell meat as it struggles to stay in businesses along with a lot of other restaurants across the UK. Uh it started off with a vegan restaurant in Chester or Chestershire. We'll start selling meat dishes as it struggles to stay in business. It's decided to start selling it along with other restaurants and chains, places like Macclesfield, Chester, and beyond, right down as far as London. Will be starting to sell meat in their venues now because once they change to an all vegan restaurant, their sales went through the floor and they're starting to struggle to stay in business. So they started to put meat now on their menu and as has obviously triggered the the little woke you know oil protester vegan eating morons out there they're all like triggered now and they've got this petition online now about it and they're going mental and they're going to be protesting about this and they're going to be going nuts and everything's going to be crazy and oh, i don't know but the business owners have come out and said they've had no more choice to, to try to do this because obviously the businesses are now struggling um, meat eaters and, and plant based eaters will now be able to dine in the same place because the decision has been made because the, when they're having a dedicated non meat eaters plant based vegan eaters the, the business is just going through the floor so it's not all going according to plan for these people who have been literally online mouthing off of people I've seen videos on Instagram and Facebook and all recently where these people are Standing outside the likes of McDonald's and people are walking outside, like say they're stopping in for a bit of lunch and they're grabbing something to eat. They're standing slobbering in these people's faces saying, you're disgusting, you should die for what you're doing. You realise what you're doing. Well, it's all coming back to bite you on the ass now because all your little vegan restaurants are all now starting to sell meat. So, apparently there has been a few petitions put online. So all these little do-gooders will all be running around now pulling their hair out and going, oh my God, they're putting meat to the vegan restaurant. Oh my God, it's the world's going to end. Stop, stop, stop. Oh my God, please don't. Really? Listen, eat what you want. If a person wants to eat meat, let them. If a person doesn't want to eat meat, let them. 
Let them eat what they want, what they're comfortable with. So if I'm talking about this today, no doubt I'm probably going to get a few emails about this saying, you're terrible. You should be shouldn't say things like this. Oh my God, I'm going to get you cancelled. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Knock yourself out. (laughs) I couldn't give a shit. But yeah, just as hard today and some of the stuff, when I looked into it more, I looked at some of the petitions, some of the comments in it are like, oh my God, are you serious? Like, People saying it's a tragedy of the world, the world's going to end and all. And I'm like, oh my God, you you need to get out more people. You need to get out into the big bad world more and live more. Instead of living in this little fantasy bubble that you live in. But anyway, enough of that. Uh, Interesting story here today about a driver. A Birmingham man who has never owned a driver's license has been sent over 100 motoring fines. A man cannot drive his... Had over a hundred fines sent to his home address to address to other motorists. Rob Richards said he has been chased by bailiffs over the penalties despite never holding the license. Parking charges, speeding fines, everything you can think of under the, under the sun, totaling up to the price of over twenty three thousand pound in fines. The government is now urging people with victims of car registration fraud to contact the DLVA, but he's getting the people sent to people his house and all people's names. Unbelievable. And this guy's never owned a driver's license in his life. <laughs> Fucking hell. Some people do now things that just don't really care to. They're like, unbelievable. Crazy, crazy, crazy world out there. Oh, 23 grand. Oh, Jesus. Madness. But anyway, <laughs> that's just some wee things I want to talk about today. I'm going to get into some of your questions before I do Jackass of the Week this week. 23 grand. What an absolute mug. Right, let's get into some of your questions here today um, from the podcast. Just two wee seconds here. I forgot to open the email before I sat down today, which I should have done. Matthew, you're being stupid as usual. You should have opened up the emails before you decided to go in there and do it. Right, let's have a look here and see what we've got first of all today on the email. Right, I've one here from Gail. Gail writes to me saying, Hi Matthew, I know you talk on your podcast sometimes about politics and stuff, but I just wanted to ask you about the current election for the next President of the United States. I know you always take the piss out of Sleepy Joe Biden, but do you really think in your heart of hearts that he will be re-elected as President, or do you think Donald Trump will be once again President of the United States? Interesting question. Um, funny enough you say that, I was just flicking through TV last night and Donald Trump came up on my TV. Um... I personally think the Sleepy Joe should be put in a car home. I don't think he's he's fit for office. He's far, far, far fit from office. He's fallen over. He's forgetting things. And we've talked about it for a long time. The guy shouldn't be in office. Should Donald Trump be president again? I think he should be. Because whenever he was president before, you know, the economy was booming. You know, jobs were, the unemployment was down at a low rate. Because obviously people were getting more work. Uh, immigration was down by a landslide. He built a wall to keep all the immigrants out of the country. You know, he's a businessman, so obviously he was doing good deals. My opinion, he had Vladimir Putin in his back pocket. Um, he was making deals with other countries to try and settle things and keep things at peace. But then once Sleepy Joe came in, then obviously it all fell through the floor and like Sleepy Joe does fall down the stairs. Fell down like a set of dominoes. But um, no, I think Trump should be there again for at least another four years to see if he can fix things, which he's going to have a hell of a job to do, to be quite honest. He's going to have a hell of a job to do. But anyway, thanks for your question. I, uh, again, thank you once once again for your question for the podcast today. Right, let's get into another one here. Let's have a look here. Right, one here from Stuart. Stuart says, Hi, Matthew. I was listening to your podcast from Tuesday and listened to the part where you were talking about working in retail. I work in a retail department store. Here in the UK, I'm not going to give the name because I don't want to get myself in trouble, but I do agree with you, customers and I are an absolute nightmare. I've been doing this job for 23 years, and especially in the last five years, especially even during after during and before after COVID, customers have become so much distant, no more friendliness in them anymore, and they are very cheeky and nasty on a daily basis, especially if they don't get what they want. The younger ones from night is from the, the age of 18 to 23, 24, or even worse. They're so overprivileged and they think they're owed everything. I listened to you the other day on your podcast talking about it and I couldn't agree with you more. Sometimes I feel like leaving my job and walking away, but I decide not to because at the end of the day, it keeps a roof over my head for my wife and my two children. 
Thanks for the great podcast every week. Love listening to you on Spotify. I've added you to my favourites as always. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you for that. Uh, yes, retail. Talked about that the other day, guys. Retail is a fucking nightmare at the minute. So it is. I was at the other night there with Lewis. I walked into a B&M store and I was talking to one of the wee girls behind the counter, uh, was putting stuff off on the shelf and she was talking to this nasty customer and the customer walked away and I went up to her and I said, you look like you're about to cry. And she goes, you know something? See, the customers that come in here sometimes, I swear, I wish I could throw them in that back store and just lock them in a big box somewhere and leave them there. I went, really? She says, I am just sick and tired of them. And because you don't have a certain thing or you can't answer a question for them and all, you try your best and even get a manager to help you too, it's still not good enough. They're just cheeky to you and that. And I'm thinking that's why I walked away and I said, I'm, I'm glad I'm not in retail no more. Thank God. But no, honestly, it's it's a nightmare. But anyway, thank you for listening to the podcast. Thanks for listening to us on Spotify. Once again, share the podcast with all your friends. I appreciate it. 23 years in your one job. I don't know how you've stuck retail for 23 years. I'd probably be in jail now for murder. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the question. Appreciate it. Right, I'll do one more in the email and then I'll move into the social media. Right, okay, let's have a look here and see. Right, I want to hear from Alan. Alan says... Love the podcast every week, Matthew. Keep up the good work. Started watching some of your recent YouTube videos over the last six months, and I must say it's quite funny to watch how much your kids have grew up over the last few years. Love listening to your podcast in the car, on my way to work, and on my way home from work as well. Keep up the good work. Quick random question for you. What is your favourite fizzy drink? Okay. That's a tough one. Um, It just sort of fluctuates. Obviously Coca-Cola's been always been the main one. Favourite fizzy drink? Mm. If I had to pick one now on the market, does that include energy drinks or does that include, you know, hydration drinks as well? If, if it was just fizzy drinks like Coke and Fanta and uh, Coca-Cola probably or Fanta Orange. Um, if I had to pick something else, I, I do, you know, something every so often that I, I like a good tin of Iron Brew. I haven't had Iron Brew for a long time. Uh, white lemonade is quite nice too as well but I wouldn't have a real sort of like 100% that's my favourite fizzy drink of all time but if I had to pick one it would probably be Coke so it would be but there you are well thank you for your email and thanks for watching the, the YouTube videos there's plenty more on there if you want to watch them all plenty trust me there's loads on there <laughs> right let's get into the Facebook page today on Mirror Army YouTube channel on Facebook guys um, if you want to Drop us a wee message on there. I got one today from a long time listener and he actually attached a photograph. Good old long time listener, Karen. Hiya, Karen. How are you? You send me messages all the time. He sent me one today and I agree with him. A picture in a supermarket of Easter eggs. And he wrote back saying, It's fucking February. And big angry faces. Here, Karen, I saw them in the shops in England in December before Christmas. So, yeah, I know what you mean. He sent me photographs here of Easter eggs, which is, looks like a celebration Easter egg, a Skittles Easter egg, a Mars Easter egg as well. And it says here, it's fucking February. <laughs> and I go, well, I know. So, yes, Karen, thanks for that. <laughs> I know what you mean, mate. I saw them in, in, in December in England, and I was standing there going, really? And then I saw them in our shop the other week at the very, I think it was the 1st or 2nd of January. And the whole area was plastic with Easter eggs. And I'm going, oh my fucking God, I'm done. Like seriously, it's crazy, I'm done. Absolutely done. So I am. Right, let's get into another one here on... Let's see, where are we here? Facebook. One here from Linda on Facebook has wrote to me. Hello, Matthew, how are you doing? Can I ask you, do you ever watch darts? What do you think of this new 16-year-old dart player who seems to be beating everybody at the moment. What is your view on him? Keep up the good work. Yes, this young man, this 16-year-old a prodigy. I, I don't know where he's came from, but he's came out of nowhere, and he is amazing. Apparently he's got a big game tonight in uh, Cardiff. So he has. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, I watched him in the... Um, the final, Luke Littler, 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 L-I-T-T-L-E-R, Littler, he uh, is 16, and he came, he came runner-up in the World Championship final, I watched the final with uh, Brooke and Lewis that night, great, great wee dart player, um, he is playing in Cardiff, he is playing tonight, but yes, I do watch darts, yes, 
I play darts as well. I have a dart. I have a dart board in my house, uh, which I play all the time. Uh, mostly on the Thursday night when I'm having a couple of beers with Tony. But um, yeah, I know of him. He, he's an excellent player. I mean, for sixteen years of age, it's like whoa. Couldn't believe he was sixteen when I saw him. I actually saw a funny video floating around the internet of him. Um, did you ever see the film Bad Boys? I think it was the first one. Where Martin Lawrence's daughter's going on a date with a wee lad. And he's really tall and he's 16, but he looks about fucking 20 odds. And Martin Lawrence, as you know, is a policeman. He opens the door and he's like, can I help you? And he goes, I'm here to pick up. I can't remember the name. And he goes, what, who the fuck are you? And he goes, I'm here to pick up. So he goes, what age are you? And he goes, 16. And he goes, motherfucker, you look 30. <laughs> and that's the thing. The video of the mix, Luke Little, his first interview him with him, going, hi, old you. And then Luke comes on the screen and goes, 16. And then goes back to Martin Lawrence and he goes, motherfucker, you look 30. He does, he looks about 30 because he's a 16 year old, he's got a full beard and all like you know, so, but to answer your question, yes, I, I do watch him, he is playing tonight, so I might stick a darts on tonight, actually, and watch him, um, when I'm having the beer tonight, actually, be good entertainment for me tonight, actually, when I'm having a few beers, uh, so yes, yes, I have watched him, he's an excellent player, and I hope he, hope he is, uh, has a bright and prosperous future, because if he keeps his head screwed on, the young man can make a, a good living out of it and become one of the best start players in the world. So fair play to him. You know what I mean? He is a, he's an excellent uh, darts player. So he is. So, But yes, I have seen him. But anyway, moving on to the next one here on Facebook. Let's have a nosy and see who else has sent me a wee message today. I'll do one more before I go to the old Instagram. Let's have a look here and see. Right, there's one there that I actually got yesterday. It says here, it looks like a football question to me. It is a football question. <laughs> I've got Carl on to me here saying, Hi Matthew, what's your views on Connor Bradley scoring his first goal for Liverpool? I actually remember watching him playing for Northern Ireland not that long ago and he looked like a, pr- a bright and prosperous player for the future. What's your thoughts on this? Uh, as a Manchester United supporter, if I was a Liverpool man, I would be excited for this player coming forward and it's good competition for, he says, TAA, which is Trent Alexander-Arnold. Yes, as I said, start of the podcast, I'm glad to see him getting his goal last night, over the moon for him. It's tough for the wee lad, so he is. He's a, he's a great wee lad, he's got a real good attitude towards everything, so fair play to him. So, he uh, has the right attitude, and hopefully he keeps his head screwed on. I saw the interview there, was it last night, of Klopp, where somebody in the turnaround said to him, you know, Bolton were asking for him to go back on loan, and <laughs> Klopp went, you know, too late, he's mine, he's staying here. Because he was on loan at Bolton, but he says, nope, Mm-mm. he's staying here. He's one for the future, so he is. <laughs> right, I'm going to move over to Instagram here now and check out some of your Instagram messages before I do the jackass of the week. If I can decide to get this thing to open. Ah, there we go, Instagram. Right to be. Let's have a look here. Right, a one here from Daniel. He's actually, his name is Daniel, is it Bradshaw? Yeah, Daniel Bradshaw, he's just sent me a message asking me to check out his YouTube channel. I'll do that later for you, Daniel. Thank you for the message, Daniel, appreciate it. Uh, Let's have a look and see. One here from Anthony, not my brother, Anthony, Tony. Anthony has sent me a question on Instagram saying, Hey, Matthew, was watching your videos over the last couple of weeks and came across your video from... I'm speak AEW All In in London. I was supposed to attend the event with my brother, but we both came down with flu and we had to sell our tickets. Will you and Lewis be at the event this year? And will Lewis be going dressed as the acclaimed since you bought him the acclaimed belt for Christmas? <laughs> well, to answer your question, yes, we will be going this year. We are going to this year. And Lewis will probably bring his belt with him. Yes, if you haven't saw the video from Christmas, guys, we got Lewis. The acclaimed, very rare, I'm going to say rare, I mean rare, the acclaimed uh, trios tag team title. If you're not a wrestling fan, you'll understand. But uh, yeah, Lewis will be going there probably. He said he might be dressing up as the acclaimed this year. And I'm like, why? Why are you dressing up as the acclaimed? He says, because obviously they're my favourite wrestlers. Plus when you go to big shows like that, you obviously dress up and have a bit of fun. So you do. But yes, he'll be there and I'll be there too. So if you're there, we'll keep an eye out for you. So, well, but thank you for the message on Instagram, as always. <laughs> Let's have a wee thing here and see. Right, I've one here from Chris on Instagram. Looks like a serious one here. Hey, Matthew, I just wanted to bring this to your attention as you're a regular customer with EasyJet. 
Well, that is true, actually, yeah. I had a very bad experience with EasyJet recently when I was trying to travel to Spain with my partner. Our flight was delayed by a few hours. Then it was delayed again. Then they offered us to try and put us in a hotel for the night, which they didn't do. They then completely ignored us for an hour or a few hours and then cancelled our flight to the next morning. We ended up having to sleep on the floor of the airport. We were absolutely disgusted by the service from EasyJet and I must say I will not be flying with them again. Can I ask you for your opinion on this? Because I know you travel with EasyJet quite a bit. They did say they were going to offer us a hotel, but they didn't. And we ended up sleeping on the floor, as I said. Hope this message reached you in good health. Enjoy your podcast every week. Okay, well, I'm, first of all, Chris, I'm very sorry to hear you had a bad experience with EasyJet. Um, I've always had a pretty good experience with EasyJet. Um, we had a bit of an issue there last year with our flight almost being cancelled, but we had to just set it by for a couple of hours and then they were going to put us up again. But then our flights were cancelled at a time whenever all the flights were cancelled in the UK at the time last summer. But they were very, very helpful to get us a flight the next morning and they helped us get a wee hotel for the next night. So I'm very sorry to hear that they actually didn't put you up because there is laws that state, you know, if you have to spend a certain amount of time that, that the airline has to compensate you in some way capacity, but it's obviously they haven't done um, you know, I'm, I'm very, very surprised with the customer service that you did get from EasyJet because they're normally really, really good every time I have an issue with them. You know what I mean? So, and any other time, I, I mean, even our, us and I on the flight, you know, whenever we were flying to Liverpool all the time or sometimes the staff recognise us again because we're obviously back and forward to Liverpool all the time, but I don't know. It's, I'm very surprised that they had a, a bad experience. Now, I don't know why you've contacted EasyJet themselves to discuss this matter and obviously make a formal complaint and try and put in some type of compensation because you can do that. Obviously because you've, you've been delayed and delayed and delayed and then cancelled for a while. But I mean, I'm surprised they didn't put you up for a hotel because they normally do that. I'm very, very, but all I can recommend for you to do is to contact them and, and obviously give them your flight number and stuff and tell them what exactly happened. And, and no doubt in my mind, they will compensate you in some way for it because the time that our flight was cancelled, um, Overnight in London, I put a compensation claim in for it and I actually got a full refund on the flight. And the pay for the hotel too. So I would get in touch with them. I really, really would. Chris, honestly, contact them because at the end of the day, you know, they the can't be leaving you land sleeping on the floor all night. But I hope you end up getting to the place you were going to and you had a good time, whether it was a holiday or whatever it is you were traveling there with. Um, but again, very surprised with EasyJet being like, like that because they're normally their service is quite good. So it's a bit of a strange one, but I hope you get sorted. Um, if you're stuck for trying to find information, remember, send me another message again, and I'll try and dig out some information to help you, point you in that direction to get more help. But very, very surprised with the way they just left you like that. Strange one. But I hope you get sorted, Chris. If you have any more, any more questions, drop me another message, um, and I'll try and help you out as much as I can. Right, I'll do one more here on Instagram before I go, because obviously I want to get the jackass of the week done. Let's have a look here and see. Right, of one here from Lindsay. Lindsay on Instagram has said to me, Hey Matthew, just enjoy listening to your podcast every single week. You seem like a very genuine, down-to-earth person. Well, thank you very much. I'm just me. <laughs> I love watching your YouTube videos as well. I love the way you and your son are very, very close. It's very sad to see when your kids grow up so quick, as my kids are both grew up and I am moved out and gone, married and children. I'm also now a grandmother to one of my son's babies, which I adore. I'm sure now you're getting to that point now in your life where you're thinking to yourself, I wish they were still babies. I actually do, yeah, every day. <laughs> but I just wanted to like, say to you that I love all your videos and I love listening to your podcast. Can I make a suggestion for your 100th episode as well? Do a video podcast. A lot of people seem to be talking about that. Please do it because we'd love to see you sit and talk generally live to the camera. Also... One last thing, would you ever consider doing more live streams on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube? Well, Lindsay, that is the thing I'm going to plan on doing, yes. And, yes, my 100th episode of the podcast, the 100th episode will be in front of a camera. I was talking to Lewis last night about it. We're going to try and get a wee set up and all put them together to try and do the 100th episode podcast. Maybe at a table with a background and a couple of wee bits and bobs and stuff like that there. So we're trying to get that sorted. So we are. We were talking about it actually last night during the football. So we were. So, yes, it looks like it's going to happen. Do you able to see my ugly face when I'm doing a podcast? 
you see my ugly face on YouTube anyway, but anyway. Thank you for your question. As always, I appreciate it. So would I. Right, time to move on now, guys, to the favourite segment of the week that I love. It's night time for the Merle. <laughs> I love this segment so much. Night time for the Jackass of the Week segment. I absolutely adore this. Right, it's night time. <laughs> I love doing this. Night time for the Moor Army Podcast Jackass of the Week segment. There he is, old Boris the Donkey. Yes, and we're going to actually get a Boris T-shirt made soon as well. Boris the Donkey T-shirt. That's in that's in progress. The moment, by the way, for Jackass of the Week. Stay tuned. <laughs> but anyway, th- this guy had to get Jackass of the Week. There's no question about it. There's no doubt about it. So. No consideration at all to even think about this one this week. But anyway, thank you for all your suggestions, guys, for this. Uh, Jack asked the week this week, as always. Um, but I, I had to I had to overrule it this week and pick this guy because he's a, he's, a, he's a complete clown. So the Moon Army podcast, Jack Ass of the Week for this week is, can I get a drum roll, please? Thank you very much. The Moon Army podcast, Jack Ass of the Week for this week, is the guy who decided to get all these multiple driving offences and get them all sent to his house in a different address. The man is called Mr. Rob Richards. That's right. The guy from Birmingham who has never owned a driving licence had sent over 100 motor and fines to his house in different names, run up with a total fine of £23,000. So in my eyes, he is the jackass of the week for this week. No doubt about it. What a complete clown. What a moron. <laughs> Anyway, that is going to bring us to the end of this Thursday's edition of the Moor Army Podcast. Thank you for listening as always, guys. Stay tuned for the next couple of days on the Moor Army YouTube channel for vlogs and videos and shorts and whatever else on the channel. Uh, we're going to be doing some videos over the weekend. Lewis and I are on the road. We're going to go for a wee trip to the countryside this weekend. So we're going to do some vlogs while we're on our travels this weekend to Castle Derg. Uh, probably do a wee vlog tomorrow as well and then we'll be doing live reaction video on Sunday of Liverpool versus Arsenal so stay tuned for that so we've got a good few videos coming up on the channel at the weekend so stay tuned guys once again don't forget to check out our website moorarmy.co.uk for all your merchandise videos podcasts you name it everything's on there all our social media posts we hub on there as well so check it out our Moor Army podcast or by moorarmy.co.uk send us an email for next Tuesday's podcast which is moorarmypodcast at yahoo.com any questions at all you want to contact me on social media of the weekend you can certainly do it I'll try my best to get back to you all so guys have a great weekend um, enjoy your weekend be safe be have fun whatever you're up to and I will see you back here on Tuesday for another episode of the Moor Army Podcast so until Tuesday guys have a great weekend and I will see you back here soon for another crazy episode of the Murami Podcast. See you all soon, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs>